and we're live. Why don't I play this? Toy Guys Talking featuring so far Can Foundation members. We'll possibly have some uh, Americans coming in shortly, but uh, welcome Jay to the live stream. Hello, Jay, my friend. Thanks for having me. Jay Bartlett from Jay Bartlett's YouTube channel and Hans Chow. Good day. Glad to be here. Another Canuck and Captain Foley from Trek Yards. Live long and prosper, everybody. <laughs> Another Canuck. <laughs> and friend Nick from the Centurions Facebook group had a suggestion for a discussion. When is enough enough for your collection? And I'm just going to kick it off with two examples he gave to kind of give an idea of what he was thinking. And by all means, if you have an idea, run with it. But uh, his two examples were a collector makes a goal for a grail or any item and achieved it. Uh, then another goal for another grail is made. When does it end? How many holy grails can one person have? And a uh, collector starts a new line uh, while being tight on cash. I think Origins has done this to a lot of people. Uh, thinking that they can afford $20 per figure here and there. Not a big deal. Not like a high-priced line to get into like Hot Toys. Or even Marvel Legends are classified now. And uh, after a while, after a year or so, they look at their collection and they've spent $2,000 in a two-year period. Uh, and it hurts when you realize that. How did you allow this to happen? Mm. So when's enough enough? Well, is there, is there I, I was just going to say, question? yeah, I think it's important to have goals. Uh, I've learned this the last year, getting carried away with all the new stuff coming out, like Origins, as you were just mentioning. Um, anyone else, by the way, notice that they jacked up the prices on the Origins figures now? They're not $14.99 Canadian mm -hmm. anymore. Where? Um, my buddy picked up Sunman for me. I think at Toys R Us he was twenty two ninety nine. Oh, Toys R Us is doing that to everything ever since they got yeah. bought. Yeah, so no good. Um, yeah, that bites. So uh, setting goals. Uh, me personally, right now, I'm more focused back into vintage. It's a lot less stress and it's a lot more fun. To be completely honest, um, and to finish an entire line, whether that takes months or years. Uh, that's kind of what I'm focusing on now, and I think it's important to have goals so it doesn't get carried away. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's uh, it's nice to hear that focusing on vintage is bringing you joy back. Uh, you know, without really thinking about it, you would think, oh, it's not hard on the wallet. Like, isn't vintage automatically more expensive than modern? But it's not. We're at the point where you can actually get some really decent vintage stuff cheap compared yeah. to, uh, you know, the prices are rising higher and higher and some of it's junk. Some of it falls off your shelf and, and breaks. Whereas you can still have a toy that's 30 years old, fall off a shelf. And those, you know, those were built to survive the drop test. It's true. Yeah, I, I really feel modern stuff, especially NECA, as much as I love their licenses and their sculpts, uh, they're they're like fragile glass almost. Um, it's like crystal. I, yeah, two of my Back to the Future figures broke just taking them out of the box. And I'm not heavy-handed, so hmm. yeah, I agree with you on that. <laughs> Everyone's had that experience with McFarlane and with NECA, although McFarlane has improved. Like They're, they're using bendier material lately, especially on those Batman the batman toys mm. that they just recently did uh stewart what do you think yes have, do you have enough star trek stuff no um, <laughs> <laughs> my problem is i collect more than just star trek as well and my problem right now is room to display it all bingo uh, that's when it kind of becomes a bit of a problem um but there are things that you can put in storage if you need to and bring them out every once in a while, swap things around, make it new and interesting. But when is enough enough? I don't know. I haven't re reached that point and I haven't haven't got to that decision yet. My wife's like, where are we going to put that? I'm like, we'll worry about that later. <laughs> cool. You know, we'll make always, you can always make room. You know, I so. uh, I got to do a tour of my my new this is the new toy room. And I, mm -hmm. I don't really do like 
big fireworks and stuff. Hey, the grand unveiling. I just kind of quietly do things. Yeah. I listen to a lot of Denzel Washington is always saying, shut up. Stop telling everyone what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I do the new room tour, uh, I think I've got something that'll possibly uh, uh, give people ideas on how to make more room when you're out of room. Uh, but Hans, um, yeah, and I, I know no, there's no a simple answer. It's That's why it's a great topic of discussion. Uh, there's many different scenarios. But uh, what are your thoughts on uh, when you reach a point where you say that's enough or no, this needs to keep going? I think it's important not to get caught up for sure in the in the collecting thing because it uh i as i said, it started very recently and the first three years I'm, were. Uh, i'm so sorry to your wife by the way <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a financial nightmare yeah. for the first three years and then um so it's actually you i spoke to um and uh one other toy collector they gave the advice it's like don't run things down just you know it's a marathon if it is a race at all, if it, it, so I started to slow down a lot and I found I enjoyed it a lot more. And, uh, what kind of keeps me going and limiting what I buy really is, is, and I keep bringing this up as my kids, cause they play with it with me. They're like, well, how do you, they want to know the backgrounds of certain characters and so they cause they're big into He-Man right now. So yeah. that kind of came to the front as the collector thing and they don't want the ones with the million points of articulation they want the ones that can kind of smash together or so yeah. Get, yeah so we get the cheaper ones and that it's nice because i don't have to store it anymore because once i've bought it they run it into their room and then we play with it there and then i can walk back down into my room that stays relatively clear but with regards mm -hmm. to limiting for collecting i think it's good to set a goal for maybe like a four month goal and then four months off to enjoy what you've actually bought. Cause if you're not enjoying it, then, then you're legitimately just amassing. Yeah. And Ho hoarding, right? You, you're hoarding. You, you really are just hoarding and you have to be careful, I suppose with that. Cause it's not enough to possess something because possession does not necessarily mean enjoyment. You right. must enjoy right. it. You don't enjoy me. So I have to share this with you all. I walked into a store yesterday and I bought a blind bag. Because I don't buy blind bags because I think they're quite lame. But every now <laughs> and then, my, my kids were picking them out and they were a dollar a piece. And so they grabbed a Paw Patrol one and something else and they there was a joy in it. So I was like, well, let me see how this works. So I actually grabbed a, a Mega Constructs blind bag, uh, a Halo blind bag for a dollar. And I got a, I got a, a Marine. Oh, cool. And That's cool, it, man. There was kind of a joy to it, not knowing what I was going to get. And it was really weird because I played with them yesterday and I played with my Halo Marine and they were um, Paw Patrol and this character from um, PJ Masks. And I that bought me a lot more joy than buying uh, that Flint classified figure for 25 bucks the other day, I have to say. So it's really, to me, is linked to that happiness factor, you know? Well, I like that. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's the hunt that's the fun part. And then once you get it, it's like, okay, now what? Um, Spock said it best when he said, having a thing is not so pleasing as wanting sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. And it's one of those things like the, the, the destination isn't necessarily the fun part, it's the, the trip. So it's a lot of people enjoy the hunt, just being able to find those things, get them for a good yeah. price and actually adding it to the collection. Sometimes it's like, ah, oh, you know, amazing. Other times it's like, okay, I have this now, now what? <laughs> You know, so yeah. When is enough is enough? That's good. Um, if you guys, do you guys have this problem where you see your guy? You know, so mine would be Storm Shadow, and no matter what version of Storm Shadow comes out, I have to buy it. Do you guys have that problem too? Because I think yeah, th that's what Luke Skywalker, Jedi Knight, and Storm Shadow. Like, so if it's a classified, the reaction one, it doesn't matter. If I see Storm Shadow, I have to have it, and I think. Yeah that's one of my major weaknesses is like how many storm shadows do i need you know hey I, I always when i i have pieces like that and mm. what happens is i always sell every one before so i'm only ever in possession of one and no matter oh, how okay. many reviews i watch i don't let anybody convince me that i had sold the one that i didn't like because it's one of those weird things where if in a vacuum if you owned 
all of them, you'd be able to look at them and be like, well, this is my favorite, and therefore I am keeping this one. But if you listen to like 10 other reviews, you end up with 10 people telling you 10 different opinions and your own gets diluted. So the yeah. Storm Shadow, exactly, right? Um, everybody's like, well, the vintage one. And I'm like, I don't really like the vintage one. I like the one second version where he's actually a G.I. Joe. And that's my version. Yeah. Of the tat. Yeah. yeah, with the, with the gray. Oh, by far. That's the best for sure. Especially if you're if you read the comic, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I have that, that problem with Constitution class, TOS starships. I've got a ton of them in this house, and my wife's like, how many do you actually need? It's like, well, all of them. Because <laughs> I, 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 just, I, just, I just helped crowdfund a, one, from, uh, one from Tomy, which is this size. It's a 350 scale, which is about 34 inches long. But it's all die-cast metal that lights up. And wow. uh, it's like $600 US. And uh, that'll be out next summer is when they're going to be delivering them. So... I gotta find a home for it, but I, I just love the Connies and uh, Stuart. You have to get rid of that pesky Star Wars stuff to your left there. Oh no! Like I get said, I like a lot of different <laughs> stuff. More Star Trek stuff. Up. <laughs> he no, might I, stuff. I know a guy who knows a guy <laughs> who'll help you. <laughs> hey, we got another Canadian joining us. No, he's a comedian, but that's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, how you doing? I can't complain, man. Doing stuff, saying things. Sorry I'm a little late. Couldn't decide what to wear. But uh, looking forward to it, man. Rubbing elbows, greasing palms. What's up? What's up, Hans? Jay, Captain Foley, Michael. Up, good Bob? to see you, crazy cats. I heard you were making backs crack and livers quiver. Yeah, you caught that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'll borrow, liberally uh, borrow from Dusty Roads when I'm uh, promoting a, a comedy show. So did you have people like it. Did you have pork and beans today? Just curious. <laughs> you know, I, I might as well at the rate I'm going. <laughs> uh, Things are looking. I'm, I'm excited for the, this topic. Well, do you? Yeah. Do you have uh, a, a set rule, or is it like with me? It's it's more every situation and scenario is or scenario is different. Um, for me, it's money and space. You know, like I have certain. I think you can only really have one Holy Grail because there was one. There was only one real Holy Grail that caught the cup of uh, the blood of Christ. So I, I think it's kind of funny. I've used it too, but I think it's funny when someone has ten Holy Grails. Like I, I think you're missing the point of the whole concept well, of the Indiana Holy Grail. The, uh, Indiana picked the smaller, humble one, right? Like yeah. you go for the flashy one, and then him and uh, his dad, Sean Connery, rode off into the sunset of memory service. Yeah, exactly. But I guess. You know, to, to use that term that is widely accepted in collecting, ultrasonic quicksilver would be a grail for Silverhawks collectors because it's, I think, the rarest Silverhawks figure released in very low quant quantities. And the reason I have him sitting here in front of me is it's a figure I've, as soon as I found out about him, I've wanted him for a very long time. But in this particular case, that is a, uh, that's a spot where I go, enough is enough. I ain't dropping whatever it is, $1,000, $2,000 on any figure like any four or five six inch I, i'm not paying that much so this guy right here is actually just a, a custom not a cheap custom but oh cool you know he was he was what a custom would be something like this you know if you guess 60 to 80 something like that it's a remold of a quicksilver and i look at it and i love it so much i, I actually think it looks better than the official because it's all shiny silver paint and so that's one case where I go, the price on that one, I'm not doing that. Like for me, if I were to look at my collection, my one true holy grail is Fortress Maximus. That was the one item in my whole collection that I went, price is really no concern to me. I, I And this was before the reissue, the Encore, and I thought they'd never reissue them. I really didn't think they'd ever reissue them. So I dropped, you know, what... A, a uh, G1 Fort Max in a box would go for about 10 years ago, I think it was. And I bit my knuckle and I went, that's way too much, but that's my holy grail. Like the flag, when I got it, I got it on the cheap. I got two incomplete ones, merged them. I've told the story several times and I ended up right. really almost getting one for free doing it that way. The Defiant, I waited forever and I got one with tons of damage and missing parts and 
I was going to ask you if that was because I, I know you were chasing that uh, for a bit. If if the defiant was uh, one of those categories, because I know you had the flag for a bit. Yeah, but it was you know, and it was a pretty penny too. But it was a fraction of you know what a what a one in much better condition goes for. So for me, like I, I would say just I got the one holy grail, and I don't have any others. Like yeah, I'd love a Thundercats Slayer. I ain't paying what they've been asking for it for five or ten years now same with the sectars hive one popped up locally six hundred dollars with box still in baggies you know only the little finger puppet was missing and that might sound like a great deal but i was like nope it's just money and space i'm i'm out of space but uh what are your thoughts uh Time distortion and uh, space is the place, uh, huh? Yeah, uh, I'm out of space too. I'm in a studio apartment, and uh, it's it's over. <laughs> it's just basically I have room this year. Whenever I see them in stores, I'm not rushing. I don't even want I don't even want to order them online, just to have not have another cardboard box in the place. Like I don't even want to do that. And I'd rather buy them in stores. I'll get a studio series uh, Dinobot Sludge whenever it, it, it uh, flies around and. Uh, the any potential holy grail which doesn't exist yet. If Motu Origins does a fright zone, I'll be like, cool. I think you got me. And uh, it's about uh, it's, if I can't get another apartment, it's <laughs> big girl. It's it's about time to pack it in. I've already started putting stuff away, um, but I just can't display everything. And if I'm, I'm building my. This is the immobile command center for uh, uh, GI Joe. It's a little tribute oh, cool. that I made Let's for one of my. Uh, Made for one of my videos. There's Aww. stuff on it. You can see how uh, awesome. Yeah. So I've been. That's in my latest uh, video coming up in a few weeks. I hope. Uh, Beautiful. Man. Nice. Yeah. Maybe so when, stuff. since we're kind of gonna do a, a sidestep to the topic of a space for a moment, do you? Uh, has anyone ever w found something like not actively hunting, but it's like we all do it, right? You, you run into something. Like if I'm at a toy convention or see on my local buy and sell. There's a uh, Thundercats uh, layer, hundred bucks. Take it off my hands. Just get it out of here. I'm like, oh, I'll grab that. Sure, that's. I've done that a few times with some play sets. I'm like, are you serious? And I even tell them like, this was worth a lot more than what you're asking for. I just get out of here. I don't care. Enjoy. Good karma. So, have you ever to make space, gotten rid of something? Because I just went through that with the new room. I thought I'd have more than enough space for everything, and it turns out I don't. So I've just gone through the process of, well, I, the, the Kenner aliens carded collection is out of here. There's just no room for it. And I just don't care. Like I, I don't have any attachment to it. I thought they were, they're crap back in the nineties when I saw that. I'm like, why do I, why do I have these? Cause I, I got them for five or 10 bucks each carded, you know, at a comic shop. That's why I have them. But do, did you guys ever get rid of something in order to make space for that new grail? I just I just did that about about five months ago. I sold. I don't know if you know those big kind of Tupperware plastic bins full of transformers. It must have there must have been about fifty transformers in there, maybe more. I sold it for about a hundred bucks uh, just to get space back for a Cobra Hammerhead, which I got for out of steel. Another guy was trying to make space. It was complete. I must have got it for about uh, about. Six day, six day, seven day Canadian complete. It was dirty, but a little bit of air later and cleaning. I got it and I sold those transformers, drop of a, of a pin to someone who would have played with them and used them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going through that myself, Michael, as well, with um, a lot of the turtle stuff. That's I, not I my name. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Ultrasonic Mike. <laughs> I kind of went crazy yeah. with the, the yeah, name. That's a funny stuff. name getting the different colored turtles you know bebop and rock city before mutation and after and i'm just like i don't need all of this so i'm kind of going through that actually that's what i was doing before we started to go live here uh, i've done it a few times this year and it, it feels good sometimes you look at some of this stuff and you're like what was i thinking why did i get this set of whatever and yeah, there's nothing wrong with that at all mm -hmm. uh, i've taken way too long to do this but i want to give a shout out to everyone in the chat i've been watching the comments here um, so just hello to draws, Mike, farming little people, toy connections. So we got your gnome ski, boy wonder, Micah, uh, Adam, Patreon tribe is in the house. Uh, 
Tom is there. Matt, Destro, Tronzoid. Uh, he's got a thought here. I got hooked in by the nostalgia of seeing vintage collection Star Wars and 25th anniversary. Yeah, guilty here as well. G.I. Joe on the shelves only to take them home and put them down and almost forgot about them. Eventually stopped. Um, that's a great point, actually. And uh, welcome to everyone else in the chat there. Hello, Stephanie and Oliver. And my computer is starting to have a heart attack here. Um, that's another one of my uh, rules. Sometimes I don't know when enough is enough until it's home and it's on a shelf or hanging on a peg. Because I got a plan and, you know, I luckily a lot of the stuff that I envision actually plays out. It actually works like the, the old broom pretty much looked like I imagined and it was great. And the new room, they slog a long time to put together. And I was like, is this actually going to work? Is this too ambitious? And I finally got to the point where it's like, yep, it, it works. But there were some parts of the room where the original plan was to have a Batman shelf and a, a Tron Legacy shelf because I love like all Batman and I love Tron Legacy. And when I set it all up with all these figures and toys and I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay. And a couple of weeks or months go by and I just, it does not go with everything else in the room. It's just too black and dark and leather and modern. And mm -hmm. I, I got rid of it to just try it out. I'm like, oh, let's clean all this out and kind of space everything else out a bit more. And uh, I love how it looks without the Tron Legacy and the dark Batman stuff. It's still got Adam West Batman because that's kind of like a cartoon or comic. But another big factor for me when enough is enough is clutter is when I say enough is enough. If I don't have space on the floor or if a shelf is way too jam packed, it's okay for things to be full side by side, but I need things nicely organized like a museum. If it's just like, just mash, like my uh, modern wrestling figure shelf was just jam packed mash. Cause like J Jay was saying with storm shadow, I see a macho or a warrior. Chances are I'm buying it. Cause I, I just got to have all those different outfits, right? They were uh, famous for all of their different looks. So over the years, I've just kind of been like Nick said, right? Like, ah, what's 20 bucks? And when I finally got them on a shelf, I went, whoa, that's not, that, that's too cluttered. It's, you know, it doesn't feel good. So clearing all that stuff out and just sticking with LJN and uh, 90s Hasbro is much more satisfying. Do any of yeah, you guys like rotate your collections at all? Like I said, like throw some in storage for like half a yep. year and then pull them back out and yeah that helps fresh, a lot too. It, it's new stuff to look at so well that's that's the whole concept behind my new collection room the room is a toy everything like things in the room move walls move and uh i'll just leave it at that the the room is a transformer it's kind of like metroplex it's got a city mode and a battle station mode so yeah that's totally how how it is for me to be able to put one wall away and <laughs> turn it around. I'm like, okay, there's Star Wars is there now. Uh, so that's always been really nice. If, if you can't do that quickly and instead you got to box it and, you know, take it out and display it. I mean, that's kind of how you play with your toys as an adult. That's nice to be able to do that. It's just the time if, if you have it. Yeah. The other oh. thing I, the other thing I find is a lot of the, uh, packaging is very collectible and I want to keep a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is that takes up a lot of room uh, yeah, unless you yeah. break it all down and you can't break them all down. Right. More than the toys sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. But they're just as nice. Yeah. And if you want to ever resell it, you know, you want to have it, but I have found I've had to get rid of some of my packaging as a result of not having it. Oh, room. that hurts. I know yeah. that feeling. <laughs> yeah. and there's not much you can do about it. You don't want to throw it in storage and spend money on storage. Like, Especially it's, it's, since you, you grow up and you grow up, right? And you're in your teens or your twenties and you're like, why didn't I keep the boxes for those transformers and GI Joes, exactly. whether it's just for yourself or you look on eBay prices and you see a prowl with G1 box for going for much more than just a prowl on its own. You're like, why didn't I keep the box? And then as an adult to be like crushing the box and putting in recycling, I'm like, ah, I hate this. Yeah. But, <laughs> 
but what do you do? You, do you buy a, like a storage container somewhere and just put all the boxes there? Yeah, so it's not just me. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. Um, yeah, toy habits. How you doing? I, the, that keeping the look. So that boxes thing is a real trauma for me, and yeah. it kind of comes to the point where I'd rather buy stuff loose, honestly, and just avoid the whole box scenario. Because I buy stuff almost exclusively to open it. But then, as I said, you let other people's opinion kind of hit you and you say, oh, this is worth this much in the box. And you're like, Ugh. and then, then even, I mean, everything I have, I, I open. The things I haven't opened yet are just things that, you know, the stupid story is like I was, I was cleaning my room up to about three days ago, like Jay. And my, I let my kids help me do it. And so they're looking through. And they pull out a beach head. Broken crotch? No, no, no. It's a it was a good good specimen. And oh, good. she pulls it out, she puts it in the pile with all the other green GI Joes. You're very lucky it. to have that, by the way, because that by all rights should be Mike Irizarry's speech head from uh, what's on Joe <laughs> Mind. The guy, the guy's collecting. He's taking collect them all to an extreme and trying to collect all of the beach heads on the planet. <laughs> Hi, Mike. <laughs> Well, this story is going to hurt him a little more because she reaches into the box and pulls out another one. Oh, no, no broken crotch again. And she's like, is this the same figure? And I'm like, it is the same figure. Just put it with the green ones. And she reaches and she pulls out a third one. Uh. Like, Daddy, why do you have three of these? And I'm like, and I, you try to explain it and you look at the child's face and you realize you sound like a psychopath. And, I'm like, I realize you have too many. and then, you know, you get you have to get rid of them right because she's because then my son then asked well why don't i have two chase figures or three and i'm like and you can, there's no logical platform from which i can argue with the four-year-old so at that point you go all right i'll give away the beachheads and i'll keep just one you know because it is it is it does lend itself very effectively to hoarding eh, because it's you know it, this is the love for these things is very deeply rooted in all of us. Yes. And it's important to remember that giving toys away, it's, it's good karma, but that's shouldn't be the motivation. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be giving things away for good karma or for thanks or for you owe me one, or, you know, you'll get me on the back end. I mean, the Bible says, you know, those who look for their reward on earth won't receive it in heaven. So you should just be discreet about it. And I know how much, I'll just leave it at that because I, I don't want to undo what I just said. Uh, Adam has the solution. I'm hoping someone out there will figure out the whole subspace yeah. thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, I've experienced time slips where um, things will just disappear. And I believe it's this, uh, I've read this theory about time slips where something will, will the thing itself travels through time. So it's gone for a bit. And it's like when, you go, where's that pen I'm looking for? And it's gone. And then two days later, it's there where you thought you had left it. So um, I don't know if there's some way to harness that, but definitely subspace would solve this. Because like throwing out boxes, the boxes are looking better than they have in decades with all the beautiful artwork on them, especially not just a nice picture printed on a box, but they're doing that two-tone or, or what do you call it when part of the picture on the box is glossy and the rest is matte or semi-gloss that two two style effect two layered effect like on the classifieds you mean uh like yeah kind of I, I think classified does it i know origins does it every time i look at an origins box i go oh that's really nice like matte looking printing and then there's this part that's glossy shiny looking printing and they're making it harder than ever to uh, especially companies that still use the plastic see-through windows, they're making it very hard to throw packaging out. But just there's just nowhere to put it, and often it just doesn't display as nicely. Like I'd rather have my uh, Strider, you know, up on his stand, neighing and standing tall, than squished in his box the way he looks in his box. A lot of times, too, with some of these figures, you get extra hands, extra accessories, extra whatever. And the best way to store them is in the box where they originally came in. Mm -hmm. um, so the box is acting as a storage thing as well. You don't want to just pop those out and put them in a drawer or a cup or anything. 
Um, so it's, it's kind of rough with the packaging. It's a hard decision a lot of the times, but yeah. yeah. Uh, Mark has a great suggestion here. Make play sets out of your boxes. You can you can make an Eternian Mountain out of MOTU boxes. Ob, how you doing, good buddy? Good to see you. He is uh, out and about at the I think it's the Boston um, Collectors Mark. Con, something like that. Um, and uh, Michael from Toy Habit says this is a good idea. Just cut out the box art, kind of like we cut the file cards out of the old GI Joe cards, right? Yeah, that works. So that that'll flatten it. It still kind of sucks to deface the box, but still, I mean, you're that's that's a little something you can maybe put in a um, a photo album. I wanna I wanna thank whoever invented resealable packages and stuff because sometimes it's yeah. you you pop it open, you you check because I like because I, as I said, I open everything. So when you pop it open, you check if you're missing one of the aforementioned hands that's that's uh, Captain Foley mentioned, or missing an accessory or something like that. Because sometimes when you keep something in a box and then you you open it like five six years later and you realize it was never complete. It's been five years and it's been missing something. You know? Yeah. I feel that's that would oh. That's why mint and box. I I just always remind people when they're. They got their cherished mint in box. I've never opened this defiant. I'm like, it's missing stuff, possibly. <laughs> it's just like a house lamp or something. Yeah, I'm always afraid of that, especially since there's no windows on the Big Joe stuff, right? So it's like, is it even yeah. in there? Well, it's sealed. Well, it might be in there. It might not be. Hey, Vince, know that finally, it. when I open that coastal defender, it's missing, you know, those wheels. No! That's probably a rare thing, right? Like most of the stuff isn't going to be missing stuff, but it could possibly, especially at this point, be broken. Like I can't imagine a a box defiant that's never been opened being in fantastic shape once you open it up. Just knowing what I know about mine right now, uh, I'm I'm willing to bet that what few box defiants are still out there, there's some smashed stuff in there. That that stuff. That thing was just so brittle that uh, being compacted in a box like that and possibly, you know, banged around for years and years in transit. I don't think anyone really has a mint defiant, even if they think they do. Hmm. Tell you, there's one, uh, there's one, there's one thing I still like to purchase where I don't need to keep the container. I don't feel bad about getting rid of it. And that uh, happens to be the sponsor for all my comments today, Pepsi Zero Sugar. You get to enjoy the same great taste of Pepsi, but without any of the sugar and any of the calories. So what you can do right now, Bob Squad, go to PepsiCola.com, backslash Pepsi, backslash Zero Sugar, enter promo code Bob Squad. nothing happens. It's This can't empty, as a matter of fact. It's a waste of everyone's time, don't I? Thank you so much. Throw it away. <laughs> Why do you still have it? <laughs> I'm saving it. I'm collecting. you going to make a mountain of them. <laughs> Oliver says, uh, "Origins are the closest thing to vintage uh, toys. It's packaging and card back, or does that grab my attention?" Uh, Faker and Ninja. That, that's been a great line to get those, um, you know, those grails that I say enough is enough. I I ain't paying three hundred dollars for Scare Glow. Nope. And even two hundred. I mean, I've seen some guys even locally just uh, going through a bin, went to pick something else up cheap, five dollar. Ten dollar He Man, Thunder Punch, whatever, and there's a Scare Glow in the bin. Ooh, what's that? Oh, that's Scare Glow. How much? Uh, I know he goes for three hundred, but I'll give it to him. Give it to you for two hundred. I'm like, no way. That's that's still insane. And you know, the guy's like, dude, that's an amazing price. And I go, it is an amazing price for ninety nine point nine percent of collectors out there. Problem is, <laughs> I'm the point one percent. He's like, I, one. I, yeah, I just. That's why I'm not I'm not into toys to be paying that much. There's very, very few things I'll drop that much money on, like one, especially one five inch figure. I just I can't do it. I'm all about bang for your buck. There's a lot to be said about that quantity thing, especially in vintage toy collecting. Uh, so we're buying what do they call again? Lots of G.I. Joe stuff or lots of whatever toy, even some random selections, you get that for maybe. $100, you might get like 
ah, 15 complete figures. And then two or three lots later, you kind of have a bunch of complete figures. But if you go to try to simply hunt that one figure down, he might cost as much as the lot itself. Yeah, or and the antenna. It's it's terrifying sometimes. And I think this is a recent phenomenon, even within the last like five, six years, that the price of a lot of this stuff has gone up. The single complete la 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 whatever figure it is you know i think it's you know and it it, it does tend to make you miserable i mean with specific things um patience is key i think speaking yeah, of patience my good friend here, here's one for you guys here it's not hoarding if you're <laughs> <laughs> i have this up here to remind yeah, that's me awesome <laughs> my mother-in-law bought me this so it's not hoarding if you she was cool so I'm, awesome, I'm <laughs> reaching the end of my Meagle Buck Rogers collection. It's all loose. I need uh, Killer Kane, if anyone's familiar with the lion. he's There's nothing special about this figure. He's very plain looking. The only Killer Kane figure I can find, I've found him in two places now, he's on the card. And I've picked it up, and I don't buy it. It's, it's almost the same price. I can't find myself, or I can't bring myself to open it. Would you guys be able to do that? If you just needed one and you're a yes. loose collector, you'd be able to open a vintage 1979 Buck Rogers just to take them out and put them on the shelf. I Absolutely. couldn't do it. I had to leave them there because I couldn't destroy the art. I, I, you guys yes, but film I, it, you can justify it. Take a picture <laughs> that would last longer, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. for archival purposes, right? And that, that's actually a really good point. Um, you know, when sometimes when people see this room, they go, oh my God, you're so lucky. That must be so much fun. And I go, it, it's a lot of fun. It's more work than fun. That's just kind of what I've always done with my collection. Cause at one point I didn't even have a shelf. Like I, I didn't have a giant wall of toy. Like there was some years there where I had st stuff still boxed up at my mom and dad's place. Cause they luckily, thankfully never threw anything out. Thank you very much, mom and dad <laughs> for holding on to my stuff and knowing that I loved it when I uh, kind of moved on to other things. But it started with just a shelf on a bookshelf. Right? It would be cool to put Optimus on there and some of my old favorite Joes that I still have. And then it grew and grew and grew. But when it started to really grow, then I started like taking pictures when that became a thing on the internet. Um, and not just, you know, snap, but uh, trying to get creative with it too. And then when it advanced to like an entire room, I'm like, well, I got to do something. I can't just sit here. I got to do something. And that's when the video started because I, I was doing movies, I was doing music videos and I'm like, and that can be really, you know, the difference between a, a job and work, work is something you can actually enjoy. A job is very hard to enjoy. So while I was doing, you know, uh, videos and music videos and movies and stuff like that, which can be really a, difficult arranging everyone scheduling locations and all that stuff. I was having a lot of fun, even though it was still work with the toys doing little play scenarios and, and just showcasing and stuff like that. So, you know, it, this channel happened and, and turned into work, which I still enjoy, but it's work. It's hard. And the truth is I spend, um, uh, way more time on a computer editing than I do sitting in a, toy room playing with toys that's just how it is way more time working than playing so that's that's the thing to keep in mind for people who see giant collections that look so awesome you know and they go oh i wish i had all that stuff I'm like careful what you wish for because it's a lot of work and i'm not just talking about dusting uh, you might oh, get to God. the point where you where you feel like you got to do something with it. it it's not just you sit there and look at it and go cool you got to be productive with it and, and compelled to share, you know, share with other people and who can't afford vintage silver Hawks or vintage, uh, and humanoids figures. And just, that's why I do the retrospectives to give people a good, close, well lit, well shot in depth, look at the stuff that is not ready, readily available or affordable. I think you just Michael. answered the question of the chat though. When is collecting, when is it too much? That's when you have to dust it all. <laughs> That's when it becomes too yeah. much, dude. I get I get asked by dust uh, about dust all the time, and I just think yeah. I'm not afraid of death. What do you think my opinion is of dust? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have no glass. 
cabinets or doors or anything. I just, it doesn't, it's fine. <laughs> you know, like I probably not going to be around much longer. I want to be able to just grab a figure and not have to open a glass cabinet door and, you know, I want to be able to, else over. you know, exactly. I just, I want it to be out there. That's just me. Michael, may I make a serious point that actually doesn't involve Pepsi products? Yeah, that's not my name. Well, uh, I'm sorry, ultrasonic, Mike. <laughs> actually, also, first of all, shout out to Boba Hicks, Mark, in the chat. That's, just, that's the one of my, my, my best dudes there. Top of the evening, do you? Hell yeah. Um, uh, Dust never sleeps. <laughs> that's a toy collector horror movie right there. <laughs> <laughs> we just become uh, one with the dust. One day we wake up, we're just dusting ourselves. Well, that's the truth. Off. That's a great point, actually. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. What are you afraid of dust for? You're going to be dust one day. So <laughs> Doesn't dust come from us, like our skin cells or something? I don't know. There you know. go. It's, it's uh, you know, people who have I passed on uh, inhabiting your toys. So just... <laughs> it's just dead. <laughs> Look it's at like Hans's face. Old... Oh, no. <laughs> be respectful of the around. dead. Stop yeah. dusting. <laughs> <laughs> There's Sorry, that Mom. meme that goes around that says, um, you know, oil is made from from uh, dinosaurs and plastics made from oil. So what are your toy dinosaurs made of? That kind of thing. It's just all one. It's it, it rhymes. It's poetry. You know the, the deal. Yeah. But, uh, but if I may make a point, I'm actually a very new collector, so I don't have the 10, 12, 15 years invested. I'm not as deep entrenched into the world so a lot of this stuff is new wacky and silly to me i'm only really like two years into collecting and whatnot yeah. so i might have a different newer perspective is are we okay like like what are we doing <laughs> you understand hans you understand me like what yeah <laughs> i I, look I wonder at, i've shared pictures of my room of I, as i've worked on it and and i agree 100 <laughs> percent. too much work becomes more labor intensive yeah I, I've sent some friends pictures of my progress and I don't really go check this out. It's so awesome. Like the, the flag here, which is even taller now than it used to be, <laughs> which I've renamed the USS madness yeah. for a reason, or I'll take a picture of like the new wall. That's twice as big as the old Joe wall was. And I'll send a picture with the title or the caption madness. <laughs> like yeah. what, what is this? And in my particular case, this wouldn't have gotten to this level if you know I wasn't working with it. It's my work, or part of my work. Um, you know, I I work with it. I, it's a set. Um, the lighting in the room is all set up for filming. It's it's not you know, it's nice for display, but it's ideal for filming. Um, you know, I just put spotlights on the thing, different angles and stuff. That's basically what they are: filming spotlights. So in my particular case, it's turned into, yes, it's a collection that I like, but it's also, like I said, I'm on a computer all day shooting and editing it. Um, uh, and okay. we've got Mega J Retro is... Hey, everybody. What's up, Jay? <laughs> How are we? We're doing good. How are you? Ah, not too bad. Not too bad. Just got out of that uh, <clears throat> little downtown, so... Jay, I got a question for you. Bob just sure. uh, floated this question. Uh, in terms of when collections get to this point, his question was, are we okay? <laughs> <laughs> what oh are we missing? God. What are we chasing is, is really, I, I, think, I think it's probably a handful of three or four different afflictions. But I think if there's something <laughs> we didn't miss, uh, you know, maybe we uh, there's something to the past we're, we're clinging to or we have a kind of a collecting... Wow. Supporting an addiction, we don't want to grow up. Like Peter Pan, I got Peter Pan syndrome. What? I got Skippy syndrome. I got Jif syndrome. I got all the peanut butter syndromes. I got Smucker syndrome. That one's my jam. I got all the syndromes. Are we okay? What's wrong with us? Well, when I was growing up, like I couldn't get a lot of the stuff. I I looked at the back of the GI Joe uh, figures and the back of the Transformers car and one at one at one or the checklist one at one, at, but couldn't have it. Could only have very very few of each one. So early in my adult collecting, it was really satisfying to be able to, you know, get it, get it, get it, get it, get all those things that I wanted all those years ago. And now I'm, I'm actually, history is repeating. And I'm at the point now where I got to say, like, I canceled a bunch of pre-orders for things recently because I just, I went enough is enough. Like, I, I don't 
like I love these new modern interpretations, but I don't need them. And and I don't have the space and I don't want to sacrifice my vintage figures to make space for the new modern ones. So I went enough was enough in that case. Um, that's, you know, that's pretty much how yeah. it, uh, it goes for me. I, th I think that for the initial question, are we okay? I think the answer is yes. I mean, you know, you know we, we obviously know what we're doing. It's um, not drugs, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not heroin. As long as you're paying yeah. your bills and doing what you need to do. On top that's, of the, that's the key. And and buy your kids toys before you buy yourself toys if you have yes. kids, yes. you know, or other or other kids you know, family and nieces and nephews and stuff like that. But I, I think it's healthy. I, I, to be honest with you, it, it might not be healthy as <laughs> for, to the to the extent where you know we do it. You know where our rooms are pretty much you know covered in toys. But um, in terms of like stress relief, in terms of like you know just having joy in your life, I think it's actually important. You know what I mean? So many people don't have something to, uh, you know, to, to give them constant joy. You know, you walk into a toy room, you look around, you're like, holy crap, you know, and you just remember things from your childhood and, and just, you know, growing up and it just, it just gives you a sense of happiness. In my opinion. In my opinion. So some of my, I agree 100%. Some of my best memories of my toy room are other people, friends walking into my toy room. Cause you just get used to whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever you have, you get used to it. Like you get used to your dog. You know, that, that's just my dog. And then someone else meets your dog. Oh my God, he's so lovely. I love him. And you're like, yeah, I, I guess. But m some of my best memories are friends walking in going, whoa. And you've, yeah, I vicariously enjoy their joy, right? Like, oh man, that's, that's awesome. It puts a big smile on my face and, and they're so careful. I'm like, pick up anything, man. Really? I don't want to break anything. There's no glass. Pick it up. That's why there's no glass. Pick it up. And uh, stress relief. Thank you for bringing that up. Jay, stress relief is important. You know, it should be stress relieving. And if it's stress causing, that's one thing that really confused me and surprised me when I um, started interacting with the uh, toy collecting community that I don't know if there's a large number of it or if it's just a small group of very vocal people, but it, it really perplexed me. The, uh, the constant stress and anger and anxiety that came with not being able to get a children's toy that's colorful and looks like a comic book character or a cartoon character. And, you know, I've, I've said time and time again, like, just chill, man, find another hobby. But, uh, it's not, unfortunately it's, it's not that easy for people. They, they just, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is that they need to get worked up about something that should be Stress relief. It's like doing yoga and being stressed out of your mind with yoga. You know, like, oh my God, my yoga. I try to do downward dog here and I can't. Like it, you're, you're missing. If ever there was a time to use the phrase, you're missing the point, that would be it. Psychologically, it's also apparently incredibly important for an individual to separate themselves currently from past and future and such, right? So it's because let's be real, it's very difficult to be us like in everyday life. You kind of walk through the whole day, kind of almost holding your breath. And then when you arrive home, you kind of release. I mean, and who doesn't want to just be beachhead for a little while or doesn't want to be He Man for yeah. a little while? You know what I mean? Just or ultrasonic quicksilver. Ultrasonic quicksilver. <laughs> so we're all the heroes in our own stories anyway. Everybody else is really a side character anyway, whether we like it or not. So why not have a little bit of playtime when be the main character, be in control of where the story goes, actually maintain some degree of control over what you're doing in your own personal playtime and regain that sanity that everybody seems so very desperate to steal from you. So yeah, I think of all the people, addictions and, and, and hobbies there are, we are probably one of the healthier ones. I agree with Hans. Uh, and I want to... Yeah. Hans kind of hit the nail on the head, uh, at least with me anyway, where, you know, you mentioned that the collections, my brain just got stuck for a second. This happens, this happens from time to time, but uh, you mentioned you being the hero in control of your own story. And that's pretty much uh, where, you know, I, I guess I fall into play. Uh, I make my own story and I can control that. I actually do feel like a, a side character and not the hero in most of my own stories. I, uh, so many of my friends have gone on to do uh, with, with comedy movies, TV, commercials, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
And, uh, and and on the other turn, they also have houses and spouses and kids and garages and all that nonsense. And I have Motu Origins, and I just look and I go, "How do they live like that?" I don't understand. <laughs> What is wrong? But I get to be my, my own. And once again, to your point, Ultrasonic Mike, uh, as a new, as a, as a two year in collector guy that I caught it. Yep. That, um, yeah, taking it so seriously, because I was so wrapped up with New York City life at the time and stand up comedy and that misery. The toys just like, oh, there are other dudes who would gladly relive Joe and Transformers with me. Like, really? We can, we can, this is an option? Like, there's other like I'm not the only one. This is amazing. Thank you, Tronzoid. I agree with you too. You know, it's amazing. It's it, it, I did, I knew okay. I'm I'm not as alone as I thought, and I guess I guess the community is more to me keeping that going on than the actual the, the collection. The collection's gonna stop. I've, I'm I'm out of space. It's done. It, it, I only I buy little Wait things. Yeah. You've got tons of white empty space there above you on have you walls? never heard of shelves <laughs> like the shelves that <laughs> skirt the wall. i don't own this place i can't oh. just start banging away sorry this is, well, uh, <laughs> i didn't reach this uh magnets yeah. oh you yeah. could do bookshelves bob bookshelves, bookshelves. Bob. Yeah, that's how no there. don't that's how it started I don't know if you guys me. are helping right now that's how, <laughs> enabler, <laughs> enabler. That's how it started it. with me a bookshelf don't don't do the bookshelf <laughs> I, I think bob yeah, right. I think Bob's right, though. It's, I think that community is uh, one of the main reasons why we, why a lot of it's, a lot of us do this. And you know, a lot of people can say stuff like, "Oh, you're flexing, right? You're you're showing off, right? You're you, you've got you've got all these toys and everything." But you know what? It's not about that. It's about the sharing. You know, like uh, no. um, you yeah. know, Mike, Michael's right. Whenever somebody walks into your room, or or some or sometimes you're doing a live stream, or you did a video, nine times out of ten, someone's gonna say, "Oh, I had that." You know that that looks amazing. You know the the Thundercats in the background there. I had that as a kid. You know people just pe people lose their minds. And you know it's the it's the sharing of the joy and, and the 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 collaboration. Uh, and people are very very generous. I find. And you know what they they share their time. They share their their abilities. And half the time you say you know you'll say something offhand, like you'll say oh you know what I really missed out on this toy. I wonder if I'll ever have a chance to get it. And all of a sudden someone's like hey you know Michael. This this place is having a sale. Why don't you run over there, right? Or you know, so, or, or Jay. What, what what like there? There's um, you know, you you lost money on um, on uh, on um, what's it called? Call Banff. Call Banff but you know what? Right. You can probably take it back to Toys R Us for a re for a refund. You know, something yeah. like that. Right? The the community itself is is really what what binds a lot of us together. I think that in a lot the of ways intel. that's it. Yeah, the intel, yeah, the right. heads up. Uh, this is a great comment. It's just toys, our special toys. I like to think about our emotional attachments more than profit. That's a big reason why I've scaled back and I'm kind of reliving uh, my childhood and going, no, no. Uh, Operation Recall is a great example. I wish I could go all in and get them all, but I just, I'm reliving G.I. Joe. When I looked at the back and I went, oh, I want them all, but I can't. So Leatherneck wetsuit picking my favorites and that's exactly what i've done with operation recall ah oh, this one's great and that one and i gotta get shh and Britello for sure and that's actually been really fun but that's kind of also um another scenario that i use for or criteria for saying enough is enough um the things that i'm passing on now that maybe i would have picked up two years ago when you know um, today I'm like, w w w is it special? Like what connection is it? Um, if it's a gift from a friend, then it actually has a specialness to it. It's, it's like a gift gift from grandma, which I have no gifts from my grandma cause I didn't know my grandma. Um, but if it's a gift from a friend, I'm like, it's, it's this cool thing, this character that I like, but it's also from a friend and that makes it even more special. And, and that's, that's even more important. It, it could be a, I, uh, what is it called Funko pop, which I'm really not into, but if it's, f you know, from a very special friend for a very special, uh, gift, then uh, yeah, even a Funko pop can be a very, very special thing. It's, it's funny. You mentioned that Michael, like I, the only Funko pop I own, the only one I own is, is one that was given to me by a friend because it was, as you said, special. Yeah. They, they, they know you like this and they don't know about Big Bad Toy Store or 
entertainment earth and they just they went to whatever the sunrise or whatever they call it uh ah there's that character that he likes so luckily it wasn't a pair of underwear and if I got a special pair of underwear for a friend, I'd probably keep it uh, mint on box, and then maybe I'll finally hang something on the wall. Bob, <laughs> Bob, do you? Speaking of sticking something to a wall, uh, do you? Are you wearing Pepsi underwear right now? Yeah, I could be. <laughs> I could be if they'll sponsor me. But you know, J Jay, Jay, you weren't here earlier. But just a reminder that every, everyone and everyone uh, I, I, I'm talking to is a member of the Bob Squad. Uh, you too can enjoy the great taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar with, with none of the, the calories, none of the sugar of Pepsi Zero. But again, Jay, just a reminder to everyone else in the chat, uh, go to PepsiCola.com backslash Zero Sugar. Uh, enter promo code Bob Squad. nothing's going to happen. It's, it's it doesn't matter. Don't even oh. drink it. Just just buy it. Pour it out. Yeah, it's fine. It's Sorry, fine. Bob. I'm, uh, I'm a cool guy. That's, that's the... <laughs> a couple, uh, couple of comments here about completionism. Completionist side of me is gaining traction, so I'm trying to fight and my personal rules for collecting have helped me immensely. Collect them all, says Boba Hicks. Um, is that uh, uh, for you guys? I know it is for a lot of collectors, but when you c complete the line, line is complete. Is that when you say, okay, enough is enough? Is that enough? Or, uh, or can you be missing one or two things like an ultrasonic Quicksilver and be like, you know what? I don't need that. What I got is enough for me. It's almost yeah, the problem like is they keep, oh, they keep starting new lines. <laughs> keep rebooting, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. no end in sight. Yeah, so for vintage, uh, I like that there is an end. Yeah, yeah they're fine. I, I definitely do. But uh, the the new stuff like Origins, um, I've drawn the line now where it's I, I just pick up you know Sunman. They never made him before, or at least I didn't think they did. So I never had him, so I picked him up. But I'm not going to get Trap Jaw again. I'm not going to get another He-Man. Where do you, uh, Jay, where do you stand? Because you were a, a, a big Star Wars vintage collector back in the day. Where do you stand on these new, I call them unfinished business figures that look like the old ones and they should have come out, but they didn't. And, the and now, collection. Yeah, yeah, now top, top grade fan made uh, it, versions are coming out of stormtrooper whoever it was that they didn't was it luke they didn't make a stormtrooper luke back in the old day or oh, han? The han they never made the han yeah so on a on a vintage card custom made but do you need to get that or do you go that's not official and so i i don't need it um i i don't really have an opinion to be honest I, i've never sought after uh, i've never sought sought out one i don't uh i don't really feel the need to do that uh, that being said with the the uh, Hasbro retro line doesn't appeal to me either. I think they look terrible. I saw the Obi Wan line the other day, and it's just like I get what they're doing with the '70s style, but yeah, uh, the custom stuff I definitely don't have a problem with at all. I think it's great that there's people in the community doing that stuff, but I personally have never sought sought it out. Okay, so it's, your collection is complete without it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like that's that's a case of a vintage collection being complete for years and years, and all of a sudden something comes out, and a collector might feel like, oh no. Now what was once complete is no longer complete, and I need to buy this. Well, the vintage run ended in '85, and that's the end of it, right? So yeah, but in in you know someone's mind, they might be like, "But that's the one I always wanted." Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it that just on card or something like that. Drive some people crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like the um, the uh, you know the retro line from. Uh, from Star Wars, right? They're 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 starting to, to pick that back up again, and we're getting new characters from the Mandalorian. We're getting new characters from from all over the place. So you know, and, and on that sense, does, did it stop? Right? I, I think the toy companies just continue to want to dip into the nostalgia pool and trying to bring us back in, which is where the you know, Master Years of Verse Origins came into play, and now O Rings are back, right? It's 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 like it's like they they want to they, they want us to keep collecting, and you know that is the ultimate goal at the end of the day. Um, but you know what? If you look at some a, a company like Ramen Toy, who tried to, you know, bring back a piece of the Centurions that was never made, uh, ultimately it was the it was the it was the community, which said, you know, we for the price point that it's at, we can't afford this, right? And mm -hmm. even though people wanted it, even though people were very excited about it, it really does come down to, can I afford it? At the end of the day, yeah. Really and that was based on their resources and and their costs. It's not like they were gouging people for it and it's just a shame that uh you know we're not going to get a john thunder um hopefully 
someone else is able to do it for a cheaper price or ramen might be able to figure out a, a way to sell it cheaper well, down the road they're going a different route now right they're they're actually introducing um the six smaller ones right so yeah that's gonna be exciting yeah going back to what bob was saying are we okay i think one of the ways you can you can check uh with yourself is do you say no more often than you say yes because it's it's very healthy to say no no thank you uh i know in in my particular experience uh, i get a lot of people asking are you getting it are you getting it you know send a picture of something oh check this out are you getting it and i find myself saying no a lot like no that's cool but i'm not getting it and i've seen some people who don't understand like what do you mean you're not getting it? you love this character i do i don't need it i want it but i don't need it and it's I, I think as long as you're able to say no and it doesn't you know cause you stress or anxiety or any of that stuff if you can just let it go then you're okay I mean for everything I have I've said no to a lot more I I was thinking that the other day when they were at, you know San Diego or whatever it was a few weeks before that and I'm like they're showing off the new classifieds I'm like Please don't show Falcon. Please don't show Falcon. Oh, <laughs> showed Falcon. Yeah. I'm like, oh. it looks amazing. Yeah, it's tone is also important. It's not just no. It can't be no. Please no. It has to be like no. <laughs> Very firm. You know, no. Uh, it can't be a tease either. Like an ah oh, shucks no. Yeah. No, yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. You, yeah. you need some uh, restraint. I'm getting better with my nose. I oh, I definitely said no to bigger stuff too. Like I've gotten. I fell in love with the uh, four-inch DC Spin Master guys because they're they're affordable, they're available, and they're small. And the packaging you don't really need to keep. So, like, it's only like this tiny, tiny bit of plastic that occupies for a good cheap price, uh, brick and mortar. So, I, and I like those guys. So I thought, oh, that's cool. But um, but when you guys mentioned Star Wars, a lot of original trilogy uh, original trilogy Star Wars fans don't realize this. But Han Solo was originally played by Harrison Ford. Yeah. No. Really? No. <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was Dennis Quaid for years. Yeah, I was surprised. Well, Harrison Ford did not play Dennis Quaid. I don't think so. No. No, I thought Dennis Quaid played Han Solo, but yeah. No, Indiana Jones played Han Solo. Come on, guys. <laughs> Indiana Korea Jones was Han Solo. I I I think so. In the '90s CGI thing that Lucas did, he is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for me, it came down to you know what? Do I really need this fifth Darth Vader? <laughs> you know, do yeah. I really need another Darth? Like when they when they announced the latest Darth Vader uh, for the um, uh, what's it called the uh, the uh, Obi Wan Kenobi line, I was like, do I really need a Darth Vader? I just picked up the uh, Rogue One Darth Vader. Do I need another Darth Vader? And I, I was mm. like, you know what? No, I don't need another Darth Vader. And then there's the repaints. There's the, you know, just the, the, the consistent, you know, money-making things that they have to do as, as companies. And eventually you just you just have to say no. You really do. Because you, you don't need it. I would almost defend the Darth Vader thing and say that, um, you know, if it was two or three years, maybe some people didn't get a chance to get it. But we never have a break. There's yeah. always That's a big problem. those main characters coming. We don't have time to miss anything, right? Yeah, when the Joe Retro line came back out and it was lackluster compared to 25th anniversary, um, I thought, well, still cool for people because I've I've been able to talk to I think a lot. Yeah, exactly. I've I've been able to talk to yeah, it's all a lot of people through the channel, and they go like, oh, those 25th anniversary figures you have, and you're always showing. Man, where can I find those? And they're not like super huge die hard collectors, sir. They don't even have a bookshelf of toys. They're just like, man, I'd love to have a Snake Eyes and, and maybe a Storm Shadow. And so when Retro Line and everyone was crapping all over it, I'm like, okay, yeah, it's, it, I, I get it. I see how it's lackluster, you know, compared to what we've had just 10 years before. But you got people out there who don't want to drop 50 bucks on a Snake Eyes. So get that Retro Snake Eyes, open them up. And now, unfortunately, some of the joints on those Retro figures aren't great either. Um, I've, uh, I've opened up a grunt retro grunt and I'm like, what is with these hips? Like I've never seen anything like this on a modern GI Joe figure. They're, they're garbage. <laughs> like you, it feels like it's going to break on a, on a modern four inch figure. So that kind of sucks that, that that extremely sucks that it's dropped that much in quality with a figure, not just the packaging, but still, I mean, it's, 
whatever it is, 15 bucks instead of 50. Oh, Bobby I, just showed Storm yeah. Shadow. I got to buy that off you. I did. So, and I, I'm glad <laughs> I had, this has not been uh, on card for, for very long. So, I got this guy off eBay finally for a good price. I've been checking for almost two years. Um, I never saw him in stores once, I don't think. And I just finally got a really good deal on him. I'm like, that's half of what everyone else wants. And I am one of the people who love the 2020, 2021 uh, Walmart retro Joe line. Uh, obviously, yeah, there's, you know, about 30 something, 40 something characters we could use that. Hans, I know you're with me there. Because I started with the 25th anniversaries uh, in 2019 ish. And thankfully, uh, as soon as these these guys came out, the Amazon prices of 25th anniversary all doubled and whatever. And but but I had the bulk of who I wanted anyway. And it just helped me. It, I was I was the perfect person, like I guess like you too, Hans, for that line. Where okay, here's a I can have a black and red hiss tank, and I the blue hiss tank is actually really cool. It didn't look cool on camera, but in person the thing's really cool. I think so. I uh, yeah, so I got lucky. Uh, it was the perfect thing for me, so I ran with it. And if they were still making them, yeah, I'd still I'd still be buying them if I can grab them off a peg. No, I, I agree with you, Bob. Uh, you know, I, I, I really wish the retro line would have continued. You know, there, there were just so many characters who needed to, to, to come out, like Cover Girl and, and you know, all the and shipwreck. You know, all, all the classics who really, uh, you know, meant something to, to a lot of us, right? Um, and I really did enjoy the, uh, the retro line. I really did. The, and I think there's still a debate whether or not the cards are the original artwork or whether or not they are some sort of homage. I'm, I'm really looking at them, and I think they're much closer to the original. I'm not sure if they are the original, but it's that. Uh, I it's think that they are Garritos. I think they are Hector Garrido originals. You guys know more about copies. that stuff than I do, but but they're I don't know if that's close enough for a detail, but uh, but I do remember at the time. And and by the way, four and up. That's silly. I'm not buying four of these. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate. I think that's suggested that. price. <laughs> oh really? Okay, I didn't understand. Uh, and again, I haven't been collecting long, so I didn't. I didn't understand. May I misread that? I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. I, I know what it means. Uh, yeah, I don't know, guys. <laughs> I, I do. I do worry sometimes. Yeah, this line. Unfortunately, I hate to go off on on a, on a tangent about that line, but uh, yeah, they only came out with like fifteen something individual characters, and that leaves like another fifty, sixty. Where we're like, oh. What about yeah. Mindbender and a CG and, and, and a bat and Super Trooper? Clearly, that's the one we're all clamoring for. Where is Super Trooper? Uh, where's the Window Viper? Where are these characters? Hey, Stuart, would you get a Star Trek G.I. Joe crossover? Yeah, absolutely, I would. Like, can you imagine, uh, what, what's it called? Star Brigade Star Trek figures. Yes, that'd be cool. <laughs> I was actually on <laughs> HCC 788. He asked me to come on and... Uh, for one of his uh, Star Brigade episodes. It was fun. Oh, cool. Cool. But yeah, I would definitely get a Star Trek one. Hey, Brian, how's it going? Uh, Hans? No, I just, uh, I think there was a Star Trek crossover with uh, G.I. Joe. Was there? Was yeah, there? and IDW. IDW had. Oh, uh, what's that? Oh, Transformers. Yeah, the, 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 the comic. All of them. They all crossed over. Oh. Yeah. I, I want to um, purchase, what was him? Tiberius Maximus. The, the Enterprise that transforms into the robot. Yep. That would be yep, cool. yep. Well, the Defiant kind of looks like a Trek bridge, doesn't it? The uh, the booster, the yeah. the bridge on the booster kind of looks like the Enterprise bridge with the layout, the captain's chair, and then you got the yeah. um, the Sulu chair and the Chekhov chair. Yeah. Yeah. Be cool. I, I actually have stroke collector as a kid, so that's, I would be all over that. So. Mm -hmm. It's not too late. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think enough is enough for for me it's, when it comes to crossovers. It's it's something will catch your eye eventually. Like, like the the, the well, you know what what Nacelle is doing right now. It's it's crazy. You know they're they're dipping back into into a lot of the lines which people wanted to finish. Like they just sent out sectars, and I I was like, wait a second, sectars, and they're the exact same size as the original sectars. That's killing me. And the only thing really? that uh, is kind of is kind of like uh, you know weirding me out is that they don't have any of the the uh, insect companions. That's the only thing that's kind of kind of doing it. But for the for the most part, if they actually go deep into that line, I think I, I think that's going to be crazy. And it's again just bringing back these old properties that that people uh, you know remember and love so much. It's it's a great time to be a toy collector. It really is. Yeah, I just I just want to remind people that 
I mean, I have a complete set of sectars. I, I got them all except for the hive, which I don't need. I want, but I don't need, especially for what they're charging. But I got a complete set of sectars. I'm set. And I just want to remind people, like, I hear they're doing new sectars, same size as the originals. And if I see them and I think they're crap and I hate them, I'm still going to say, man, that's cool for people who have always wanted sectars and you know, they're not that expensive, the vintage ones, but still, if you want a brand new fresh one in a box and stuff, go for it. It's important to remember that there's people out there who've got nothing and they just want one night fighting Dargon because grandma bought it for them and, and, you know, they don't have it anymore. So just let them enjoy their night fighting Dargon reissue or modern version. That's how I feel about in Target. I always see a good selection too of those uh, reaction GI Joes uh that uh who is it is it Stuart is beamed out who's making it oh, well. oh no. <laughs> he's fighting the green lizard thing <laughs> the gorn thank you yeah, he better did. come back with a torn shirt <laughs> oh, oh there he is. <laughs> <laughs> i think i was there when you bought that <laughs> you were is yes, that the giant yeah. gorn from <laughs> yes yes it is <laughs> It's funny, you got, I was just over here on the other side of the room for a second, taking care of my dog, and you mentioned the Gorns, I had to grab it. <laughs> I see that, every time I see that at Toys R Us, I'm tempted to buy it, <laughs> just because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> but no, enough, enough is enough. Sorry, Bob, what were you saying? Oh, I forgot, it probably wasn't important. Um, no, but the, uh, the, the reactions and the, the G.I. Joe's and Target, I feel the same way, like, that is, that is so cool. I cannot start buying these. That is, that is trouble. Uh, I, I'm not starting new lines. I can't. I already have. Once I have a version of the character that I really like, I love that figure of that character. I kind of have to go. I got what I got, and I'm just glad this other thing is great to see any GI Joe Transformers, He Man, etc., Star Wars, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, on a shelf in 2022 is that's good enough. Which I'm sure the toy companies don't want me saying. No, it's not good enough to see it. Thanks. We're glad you like it. Now buy it, please. But yeah. still. Um, I just the fact that it's there. Like I don't, I don't care if He Man looks completely di like. The, the, I love the Netflix He Man show with the the kitty one. And okay, I don't care that he doesn't look like my original He Man. I, I got my origins stuff for that. And I'm like, no, nah, this is cool. It says He Man and it's on a shelf and we're in our forties. That's already amazing. It's completely amazing. This this the. It's interesting that uh, Mega J Retro, because I must now differentiate between the two Js. Mega J and Ultra J. Pro, the pro may actually be Jays. Regular J. When, regular <laughs> J Retro. Regular and Mega. I'm just regular. It's kind of bad for J when Mega J showed up. He's like, oh, I'm just the other. <laughs> the uh, the J with the beard. <laughs> with the beard. Oh, well. That's, oh. I sort of so, knew Jay was coming. That's why I put. That's why I put MJR instead, just to, just to make it easier for him. Because you're going to be a problem. <laughs> so, so Jay mentioned, funny enough, the the Darth Vader, the Rogue One Darth Vader, and they released another Darth Vader recently. So how I use, so once again, one I'm a one Vader kind of guy, right? So I look and see, oh well, he has the articulation in the wrists, and he has, he has his face, so he has all the articulation, which is good for play and posing. So I bought that one, which is the one they just released, and I skipped on the Rogue One as well as the one before, whose cape looked like it had had a fight with a bear. So I stuck with the one that kind of hit all the marks for me. And if this new one didn't hit the marks for me, I'd skip that too because Vader's a popular enough character that they're gonna release him indefinitely, as many many times. And the same thing with Luke; they released the Luke. And for some reason, I thought it was a good idea for his helmet to be on all the time. I was like, ah, skip, wait. And of course, sure enough, I think this Christmas Mandalorian Luke is coming out, and haha, he tickles my fancy, and I will I'll get that one, you know. And I think that's important for a lot of people to remember, especially with popular brands like Star Wars and Transformers. There are always going to be a million versions of a lot of yeah. the different characters. Just wait for the one that touches you. Do you like articulation? Wait for that. Do you like a nice face sculpt with a good painting, especially if you're into the fancy female characters and stuff like that? Well, you wait for that because it'll come. And you know what? If it doesn't come, meh. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's coming. They want, they, 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 we have something that they want. And they're always going to be trying more and new things. And I'm, and as as Jay, as Mega Jay said, and as opposed to regular Jay, 
it's I it's say call him Ultra J. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> call me whatever you want. <laughs> That's about equal, right? Mega and Ultra are equal. <laughs> the um, I, I was gonna good, say, uh, like, going back to Joe again because it always comes back to GI. Good Joe. point, Hans. Um, my only complaint um, so far, I love getting the new classifieds. I think that's great. But are we not living a little too much in nostalgia with this stuff? I no. wish. No. My, my only wish. <laughs> Sorry, Jay has just oh. dropped off the call. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here. Re regular Jay is here. Um, uh, since kidding. the Larry Hama comic has been going on for so long, there's been so many new Joe characters introduced. Why don't they just throw in a couple new characters in here or there? That's all I ask. I love, obviously, I'm going to buy Falcon, and I'm going to buy Flint and all the old great guys. But I'd like to see just a few new characters, too. I think that would be great. That is what's so great about Operation Recall. Because yeah. Operation Recall is the 1995 wave of Joes we never got. And, and even kind of an alternate universe 1990 or 1989 or 1988. Mm. wave of gi joe's we never got operation recall figures all and longbow look great too yeah. but operation recall are, are by the guys who made the original joe's he, he recalled the original creative joe team so for the few people out there who still don't know what operation recall is it's kirk bazigian it's uh ron rudat it's um larry hama's writing the the file cards uh mark pennington is designing them as well and when you look at these figures, the complete package, not just the toy, but the figure and the art and everything. Doug Hart is doing the paintings. Um, he uh, did some of them that uh, Hector Greedo didn't do and the later ones after Greedo left. Um, those are the new characters that feel like they belong in that world. Mm. And it's just a shame that we'll never see them in a G.I. Joe comic or animation or anything like that. But I think the old team has done a much better job of creating new Joes that can not officially be called Joes than a lot of what I've seen the official Hasbro team come oh, up with for new characters. Absolutely. And it's such a shame and missed opportunity for Hasbro too, because it just seems like no one wants to take chances. Although I'll say Origins is doing pretty good putting out Sun Man and yeah. uh, weird, obscure characters like that. I, I'm all for that. I think it's really cool. But, you know, and going you know back to what Han, go ahead. Jim. Sure. Well, I'll, 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 just, I'll just touch this on, on, on this quickly because I know what Jay's saying, and I, in, in a lot of ways, I agree. The problem is, and here's, here's the problem. I think we are living in nostalgia. I think that that's actually the main issue because so many people out there um, – one second. Okay. No, no, there he goes. No. <sighs> Sorry. It's there. It wants to come out, then it doesn't want to come. Anyway. Um, the sneeze. The, the, yeah, yeah it's, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so many people wanted uh, you know, G.I. Joe to come back. So they introduced this new G.I. Joe line. They made changes to the G.I. Joe line to make them look update new, uh, you know, on a video game. They tied they tied the whole thing in. But the what was the times, response? Yeah. The response from the community was like, This isn't my G.I. Joe. That's not Duke, that's not Scarlet, that's not Roadblock. And people literally went totally ballistic saying, No, I want the old G.I. Joes. And yeah. you know, it stifles creativity, right? People people are people are looking at this and like, no, that's not the G.I. Joe I want. I want the original G.I. Joe. And that's why two steps forward, you know, three steps back, because yeah. we were going in a direction where we were going for new Joes, and all of a sudden everyone's like, no, I want my old Joes. And now Hasbro's like, well, they want their old Joes. So then they basically start redesigning the Joes to look like the old Joes. I think it's a vicious circle that this nostalgia until someone's brave drawing, enough. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. But they look better. I think there was, I think there was, I think there was just but five... The thing, the thing is, we've never seen we've never seen vintage eighty four gung ho in a six inch scale. Like it's, I my issue with it was, it's a new scale. We've never seen him in this scale. Do that and then get creative and do the it, exactly like they did in the old line. Like we've got eighty two snake eyes, and then we got the funky visor and the sword and the more creative looking different snake eyes in eighty five after we got the cool military commando snake eyes. So I don't have a problem with different interpretations. Just, you know, when you're in a brand new scale, people are, are like, uh, that's what we were anticipating. The, the upscale ultimate definitive edition before you start 
doing the flying fists and like imagine if origin started with flying fists he-man before they released just the regular original he-man wouldn't people go what or even just an origins thunder storm he-man which we've never seen before before they did any of the other vintage he-man imagine if they did that in origins aren't yeah. people justified in going wait a minute well, you play, play the hits, play the hits, and then you can play your new new songs. That's that's what they did with Storm Shadow. Everyone freaked out at that Amazon exclusive because it was the version three. Even me, I was scratching my head, like, wait a minute. I, I'm not saying on? don't don't play the new songs. I'm just saying play the hits. I, I went to see CCR to listen to the hits. <laughs> you know, I want to hear new songs, but play the hits. On that note, guys, I got to take off. But thank you for having me. And Ain't no I'll problem, man. I got to I got to wrap it up too here. Uh, yeah. But uh, are we all heading out and do some work with our toys? Yeah, yes. that's great. It's been all a right. lot of fun, Meeting everybody. Yeah, it's been a great it's, chat. Uh, awesome, guys. Yeah, Thank you so much. There we go. Right. Thanks, Thanks Stuart. <sighs> Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone in the chat. It's been a great time, and hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Take care, everyone. Farewell. Nerd.